Welcome, everyone. Uh, please say hi in the chat and uh, write us uh, where are you joining from. And uh, let's give a couple of minutes for everyone to join, and then I will introduce our speaker, and uh, we will start. Hello and welcome. Mete from Norway, and uh, Inge is joining from Munich, and Alex is joining from Sweden. Welcome, folks. Wow, we have people from all around the Europe. Nice. It's a nice, nice crowd that we have an interesting topic today. So I'm sure we'll have an interesting conversation. So as usually, first, uh, we will have uh, a presentation by our speaker, whom I will introduce in a, in a moment. Then uh, we will have a Q&A. And please feel free to post your questions anytime in the chat. I will be looking at the chat, and uh, sometimes I will be asking uh, the questions uh, during the presentation, and we will address all the questions uh, after the presentation during the Q&A. Uh, and after the Q&A, um, I will stop the recording. And uh, then uh, everybody who likes uh, is welcome to, uh, are welcome to switch on their cameras and microphones and uh, engage in the conversation with our speaker. And I think that we are complete. Welcome uh, Lisa from Vienna and uh, Andrea from Munich. And I see that Sebastian is joining. And I think that now we are complete. So um, our uh, speaker today is uh, Osrian Cilic. He is an agile coach at uh, Sedna. Um, and uh, Osrian actually did a thing that uh, a lot of people in this group, I'm quite sure, are thinking about. So he, he let the control go. He gave the power to the people. Um, and he made it a successful transformation. But I think he will tell us way more about this himself. What when the, the, the stage is yours? Thank you. So, so uh, before we jump to the topic, uh, I tried to make this a little bit more interactive. So I have prepared a mirror board, which I could share with all of you. So I can post here in a chat link so that you, everybody could join and, and, and follow there. Uh, so what I'm talking, what I'm showing you, I, I guess uh, it could be interesting. If you don't want to do that, uh, I can still share my screen uh, and the guide us like one canvas by canvas. But I think it could be more fun if you join the, the mirror board. So I see already three person five start joining the size. Let's wait I, a few I moments. Will, I will also join the board and would you like Osman, would you would you like to share the screen the screen the screen as well or would you yes. like me to share the screen? I can and share yes, it's better if you share the screen, then it will be also in the recording. Yeah. So sh screen is shared and also everybody who want could directly join to the link and, and see what we are doing in Miraboard. This will be like live demonstration of this interesting tool and, and everything what I will talk about. Uh, okay, I see that just six people joined uh, Miro board. So if you have any issues, please write here in chat that we could check it. Uh, if if not, then we could start with with uh, first our in my introduction, and uh, I will open one by one canvas in the board. So so guide you slowly through my presentation. Uh, and uh, at any point of time, if you have any questions, please post it in the chat. Alexander will, will stop and, and uh, ask me directly. So I'm usually preferring uh, interac interaction and uh, uh, that you immediately clarify or answer some questions. So do not hesitate, just post it in the chat. Okay, let's, let's start with a short introduction of myself. Uh, so my name is Ozren, as Alexander said, and. Uh, I'm from Berlin currently. I work as an agile coach and delivery lead is my current title in Sender. So we, we are one of the latest uh, German unicorns, the, the 13th one, I think. Uh, now they are 14th, 14th uh, unicorns in Germany. Uh, and in short, I work like more than 12 years in IT industry. Majority of my career, I was product manager. I was also a pro project manager for a couple of years and last 
uh, five years I'm working in, in agile world and, and trying to translate that to the organizations. Uh, so I'm a big fan of professional and especially of systemic coaching. And uh, I like sports and I'm very passionate about agile, like you'll probably see about football and about food as well. So at, if, if you want, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or ask me any question during uh, this presentation or later. I will be very happy to stay in touch and, and co collaborate with you. So let's move on. But before we start, uh, I would like actually to uh, encourage you to ask any question which you have. So usually I, I hate presentation when I'm the only one who's talking and I like to, to hear how other people even read or what's happening in your background. Uh, so, but now like just post questions or anything and we will stop at any time and, and try to bring more clarity or, or answer to that. So, uh, why we are here and before we start talking about main topic of this uh, i would like a little bit to bring the introduction to one of the most unpopular topics uh, in probably every company and it's this is uh, restructuring so when we talk about restructuring like uh, it could bring a lot of stress like uh, to those who, who are making those decisions and also to all people who are affected with those decisions and uh, it's it's not very popular and and it's it's usually something which which happens when big leader or, or come to organization and he want to show impact immediately and then uh, of course first thing which he do is uh, or she is like transforming the company because it's visible from the first day uh, and usually many side effects happens while doing this uh, and uh, what could happen are like people who are affected the most and, and their their feelings, their emotions and uh, their connections. So uh, it could bring a lot of stress and uh, it could be very, very sh uh, risk, uh, risky for, for the future and for future collaboration and success of the whole company. Uh, like people usually could question themselves, like, is this good decision? Like what I will do? There is a lot of uncertainty and uh, they, are th they think that they need to prove themselves again or they maybe hate to work with the person who, who they don't want to work in future or they are just unsecure in what that change will bring. And like this way is one way which is usually not so popular and called shock therapy, uh, one way of change management. And uh, it, it's, it's not very good because it, about all those st stuff which I wrote here and tell you, uh, it, it brings a lot of uh, risks and, and it could affect some people. Like it could affect them drastically that some of them will even leave your organization or be so unhappy that they will be counterproductive. Uh, so the question which, which pop up when we are thinking about bringing the change and especially those big changes is, uh, is, is there any other way how, how, how we could do it? Like, could we do this differently? Uh, and uh, this whole presentation will actually be a live demonstration of how we did it at Sender, how we reorganized one of our biggest departments in company. Uh, and uh, actually uh, it was at end one very, very fun and, and uh, nice experience to everyone who are participating then. Uh, and uh, I will show you that uh, in a moment. Uh, so before we start, like answer to this question is do this differently. And there is one concept which is called, which is known as self-selecting teams. Uh, there's also a book uh, which was published like I think five years ago by Sandy Mamuli and uh, David Moll, uh, who actually did some case study and and, and uh, tried to capture all, all their findings in one book. So basically uh, I will demonstrate you now how all that could work in a virtual environment and uh, how we did some modification of, of this tool and apply it at Sender and, and what we could learn from that. Actually, I hope that we all together could reflect what, what is the learning and maybe chat after that where this tool could be applied and, and what are the good things or benefits of, from it. So let's start. And the first thing is, oh no, this is just surprise. Uh, First thing before we start do, doing everything is, is usually the, the question why we are doing that and why we want to bring some change on. Uh, and uh, the, the, this is the most important point, especially if we are collaborating and working with people, uh, that we understand uh, all pain points, all things which are, re which are there for improvement. And this, this is different way of change management where we are actually first 
recognizing the issue, then we are trying to raise awareness or, or to bring urgency of the change and then thinking about how to design potential solution. So at Zender, at that time, we were uh, in front of several problems. And this is the example of those problems which we have in our company. So we have two very, very big teams which were grow, grow, grown over time. And then we come to the point that there is a big waste in day-to-day -day collaboration between all those people. It was very hard to synchronize them and to align all of them. Uh, then the, there was no balance between skills of, 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 of those two huge teams. And then the one team has the whole, whole new product and huge scope in front of them, while another team didn't have that much. Uh, and we know that in future we will have even bigger scaling and, and growing and that we need to make some scalable solution for, for if we need to bring restructuring to our company very often that it will not be good. So what we tried here to make is, okay, we need some solution which will actually help us to grow in, in future to scale and not to bring stress to our people and actually to maybe even empower them that they make those decisions for themselves and maybe create culture which will be different than regular restructuring which which i talked at the beginning about uh, so first we kind of align about uh, th this was big exercise actually that we recognize all problems and we have a set of activities to prepare for this uh, and then uh, the next thing which 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 is actually the implementation of of this self-selecting uh, teams tool is uh, actually thinking about blue print which you want to apply for for your new desired organization and that blueprint is it's, it's nothing complex it, it's just about thinking okay how many future teams you want to have what could be mission for each team uh, or, and what could be their like customer or what could be their like topics or scope of work just roughly to give some ideas what each of those new teams or containers could be in future uh, so this is how that looked in, in our uh, in, in department when we did it. So we have two huge teams and then we said, okay, the, the way how we are growing right now, it makes sense to create four teams, uh, uh, which means that we will have four containers. So as you see here, each container has a kind of proposed name. They have defined our customers, they have their mission and their topics, which could be like, just roughly topics, ideas, what the, that team could do. Uh, and we did it for all teams. So this is activity which we did as preparation. We analyze our product, we analyze our visions and strategy for growing, and we identified what could be the best setup for the future teams. Uh, and then the second step was actually we define, okay, uh, if we let to our people to choose who will work in which team, uh, then we need to have at least some kind of the boundaries or rules so that they know how to uh, to split their knowledge equally between those teams. And the rules which we set were basically that every team has two front-end developers, two, two back-end developers, and one PM. And why two? Because simply that they are able to share their knowledge, to pair programming, to do code reviews, to learn one from another one. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, I will show you later, we have some principles so that they are basically self-organized and autonomous and they could save whichever competence they need and add as well to, to, to the, this minimum requirements uh, set of skills. So uh -huh. basically, yes. We do, we do have a question in the chat um, yes. about who actually created the blueprint. Who were okay. the people who created this um, blueprint? So the blueprint was created by leaders uh, so in, in, in our organization, we have a setup that uh, uh, for the, each department, department is like group of several teams. In our case, we have now those four teams are now six teams. Uh, and each department is led by product lead, tech lead, and, and uh, agile coach and delivery lead. So actually three of us sit together and from strategic level analyze this. Of course, at, at, at some stages, we included all teams. Uh, we prepare them for this. So, uh, so we talk uh, about them, uh, many times and they were actually know that this is not sustainable how we are growing and where we are and they were expecting the change uh, and decision about blueprint uh, was created mostly by pro so by product lead together with collaboration with with product managers so each of the product managers was giving saying for example are those missions which we put in those containers for each team inspiring for them for example, if, if you are a product manager, if you want to work with pod three, is this what is here stated as mission something which could be inspiring for you? Or you think it's boring, it's, it's not good enough. 
Then we also include engineering managers to give us opinion from technical side. Okay, if one team is working on that scope of work, is it inspiring from one engineer? Or this will be like boring, repetitive work or something which they will try to avoid. And then we tried like to, to listen both sides and to make something which is like good enough and, and to be also inspiring enough for long-term vision for one uh, team. Uh, we, we call team a pod. Uh, so just to avoid co confusion, if you are wondering what is a pod. Thank you for clarifying. And uh, there is uh, another question in the chat, uh, whether this team was a, were they a major, well-organized team before the change? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, are, we are trying to uh, incorporate like uh, five uh, very important principles for us uh, in Sender. And I will show you a little bit later. So they are basically uh, the team are cross-functional, the team are autonomous, the team are self-organizing, uh, uh, and that they are the from five to nine people. Uh, and uh, whatever, whichever decision they do, it's up to them. So they were pretty effective in that way. Uh, just the problem was, aside from the organization of work and that one team has too much uh, and another team has not that much, and uh, uh, it was the problem that they have too many people. So one team at that time has, I think, 13 people and another team has like 10 people or 11. Uh, and then uh, we tried like to make like smaller teams, which could be more effective and to work on smaller scope. So, so basically, one of the key things was that we tried to organize those containers not to be project-oriented teams, so not to feed the team with the work. We tried to make them as a mission teams, as a teams which have a clear mission, and so that they could organize their, their work on themselves. So th this was a very important fact, uh, because if we are trying to feed the team with, 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 with uh, different parts of the work according to urgency, it is more like project management. Uh, and, and something where people are not so empowered and that they don't have full ownership and, and engagement. So we tried different way actually to create a mission and to give them the goals so that they are owning their destiny and they, they are owning their decisions, but at the same time, they are accountable for their goals. There is also a question about the reporting clients. So what the team members report to different uh, people manager? Yes, so in, in our case, uh, we have... a. Uh, two reporting lines. One is product reporting line and another one is tech reporting li line. So product one is reporting to the product lead, uh, a tech one is reporting to engineering managers and then they are reporting to uh, tech lead in our case. Okay, uh, so let's proceed on uh, with this. So we created this blueprint uh, with containers for each team and mission which each team of, of those teams should have in future. Uh, and we define just minimum requirements. Uh, and then uh, this exercise was organized and prepared with idea that all our people will magically choose who will work with whom and, and they will found those teams so that leadership do not need to make those hard decisions and, and make someone unhappy and, and, and so on. So how, how this happens and what, what was actually the main part of our exercise, this is uh, this canvas. Uh, so, we put here like picture of each of our people and we put just like four containers, four boxes. And all of those pictures were here in this uh, not decided container. Uh, so basically we tell them, okay, uh, first we presented all containers and then uh, people have to choose according to those three criteriums. So first one was what is the most interesting mission for you? So if you are thinking about those four new missions, what could be the most inspiring for you? Uh, then, uh, with whom would you like to work mostly uh, regarding your personal preference? So th th this is very important for us that we keep connection between people. So if you have perfect collection, if you clicked with some of your uh, colleagues, you should keep that in, in your future team probably because then you will be more you will have more chance to be high performing team faster than if you don't have that connection with with all other people. You will need more time to create them. Uh, and then the, the third rule which, which they have is actually that they need to uh, pay attention to the balance of skills. Uh, so if we said that one team should have two, minimum two and uh, uh, backend and two frontend, so they should try to avoid one team have three or four frontend developers, just for, for the sake that other teams could also have a uh, cross-functional setup that they could complete their missions successfully. So uh, 
by knowing this, we then started uh, playing this game, uh, which was full remoted, which was all in Zoom. Uh, and uh, the rules were simple. We were running rounds of 15 minutes uh, and everybody moved their picture in one of those uh, containers. Uh, then we leave people to, to breakout rooms. There were four breakout rooms according to the what is the current uh, situation with pictures in that container. We're talking, okay, I am designer. I don't know where I should go. Uh, so guys, what are you going to do? to think about design, how we will do uh, discovery. Uh, are you interested in, in, in doing some interviews with customers or, oh, I don't like what you are telling me, then I'm jumping to another uh, breakout room to talk with another team. So, and we let them actually to have those talks on their own uh, so that those teams decide we need automated QA, we need manual QA, we don't need QA at all. Uh, we need designers, we don't need designers, we need uh, data analysts. So we completely let to them actually to decide how they will structure their setup and who will work with whom. And uh, we run this, I think, three rounds in total. So one and exactly two more rounds. Uh, and people were changing their opinion. They're shuffling from one group to another. Uh, and basically, we finished this exercise with just one conflict, which was uh, unbelievably successful for us. Because before we did it, we were very skeptic. Like, what will happen? Who will choose to work with whom? Maybe everybody will want to work with one team because uh, that is the most interesting what we thought and this was not the case basically they they have perfect distribution and there was just one case that three front-end developers want to work in one team uh, which was like above uh, limits and then after talking with them they decided that one of them will join another team that was good um, there is a question about facilitation um, for the activities in the pods during those rounds mm -hmm. um, is there a need uh, for is, was there a facilitator no, uh, no, no. So uh, this was also one of the magical moments. We just uh, put them in the breakout rooms. And this was their discussion, their private discussion. So all people who are interested for pod three, for example, they were talking there about mission, about their customers, about what they will do, how they will do. If they don't like it, they come out from breakout room and say, oh, okay, I want to join another breakout room. Uh, and then they were like changing rooms and thinking with whom they want to work the most. And uh, the also interesting thing was at some point uh, in round two or three, uh, several uh, best friends want to uh, stay in one team, but it was not possible due to the limit. And then basically, because those rules were here, they make those decisions and like one pair flipped the coin who will go in which team uh, and they did it on their own. So no, nobody was angry on anyone. It was the coin decision. And also nobody from management, from, from, from leadership make the decision for them. So it was only their decision, which was also very, very nice. Uh, and uh, when we finish all this exercise, uh, when we have something like, okay, what is the constitution of, of those new teams? Uh, then the next step was actually uh, to, did we uh, have everything what we need? So did we, did we created our, our, our teams uh, equally? Uh, do we have uh, every, every skills or something is missing? So if, if we recognize that some a skill is missing that we need, maybe we have a situation that one team need uh, more strong have a backend engineer with architecture skills, uh, then we created like last step, like uh, shopping bag and, and uh, put there what, what, what we need for, for hiring so that those teams are cross-functional uh, and, and that we could prioritize that. So the next uh, important thing, which I uh, told you already that I will mention are actually our golden rules for the future. Uh, and we have five of them. So first uh, rule is that our teams should be always mission driven, not, not project driven. Uh, so th this is the rule which, which we all in center strongly believe that uh, will actually help us to, to drive our success much, much better there, rather if we try to manage our people as a project and if we try to feed them uh, on the project base. Uh, why? Because simply we are empowering them and, and giving them a lot of freedom to do many decisions. Uh, and they are returning that with uh, amazing uh, engagement so far. So, so it, it works perfectly. Uh, the second one is cross-functional teams. So this is one of the very popular concepts these days. 
uh, and we are also trying to to uh, keep <laughs> strongly with that so one team should have uh, all skills or competencies which they need to deliver the mission uh, and if, if they are lacking something, uh, we are helping them and, and uh, acquiring that competencies uh, in a team or training them if, if that's possible. Uh, then third one is self-organized teams. Uh, so this is also very important. And uh, all our teams, even if you have this leadership on top of the BA level, are pretty self-organized and they are making decisions how they will build something. They are making decisions from the architecture or infrastructure uh, to design decisions or, or quality or, or or even which uh, we, we don't have anything which is pushing them to 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 uh, uh, to use some uh, standardized uh, ways of working across the company so they are pretty much self organized to choose what is the best for them and and this is awesome uh, and the third one is team size so those teams should be small uh, and uh, there should be ideally like five six people are but not more than nine so when one team reach more than nine people, we said, okay, if your mission becomes too big, and if you are always saying, okay, let, we need more skills, we need more skills, we will hire more skills. But when we reach nine or 10 people, this is the moment when you guys are splitting your mission to the two, two smaller missions. And this is, I think, one of the very important uh, things for, for bringing sustainability in this culture, which we want to create, because we are still empowering our people that they are owners of their destiny and they, they will choose which woman they will split to the two teams and, and actually how they will distribute themselves. So we, as a leadership, will keep ourselves uh, still in background and leave uh, those decisions to our teams that they are actually deciding uh, how to do it. So we have a few questions on this slide. Yes. First of all, uh, how do you ensure learning between the teams, especially when uh, there is a lot of trial and error in the beginning? Uh, so what do you mean by how do we ensure learning? Uh, I, uh, we have many learning. So uh, from the moment when we did it, uh, like every single sprint, we learn a lot. And uh, uh, those teams, if, if you are thinking how we are sure learning between those teams, we are collaborating still as a one big organization. We, we have, our, we have uh, when we, there is a need like common retrospectives, we, uh, we have one big release, which, which was like a big learning for each of us. Uh, now we have implemented like the, the first proper incident management uh, process, which, is, which was also collaboration of all teams. Uh, so when we release a big product, we have a huge incident in production and uh, we were very proud that all four teams were working and solving that, I think, in just four hours. Uh, and uh, in past, when such uh, incident happened like this, this was like for probably a couple of days uh, down of the system. And now, like, everybody are super happy with this. So we have so many learnings and... Uh, each team is uh, actually learning mostly on their own. They are, they are learning by, by uh, reflecting regularly and by trying many things. So, so th this is the key. So each of those teams uh, is at some point individual and they are self-organizing themselves, how they will do. Uh, and then they also have their self-reflection. Are they doing the good thing and how they should improve? On top of that, if we need some learning as a whole area, as a whole department, then we have also those uh, discussions and either as a retrospective or as a regular uh, OKR reflection or, or we have some quarterly and half quarterly also reflections. And on top of that, we also have a, a bi-weekly uh, something which is called PECON uh, score. Uh, so we are using tool called PECON, which is giving us EMPS uh, reflection so our people could give us feedback like on bi-weekly level about things which they don't like and this can be anything from the process how we are organized to the setup to uh, personal uh, problems to promotion salaries benefits anything else so we if we talk about learning there is so many ways how we could learn i, ho I hope this answered uh, the, qu the first question thank you uh, and the next question is um in, uh, in general, team, the team goes through norming, forming, uh, et cetera, phases. So it is better for the team uh, to stay with each other for some time. And then the question is, um, is there a minimum or recommended time frame people should stay with the team? Uh, so this is a good question. Uh, 
uh, usually uh, this hypothesis uh, it's, it's from Tuckman. I think uh, it's uh, he have this hypothesis about uh, stages of team development, but then he didn't prove it. And in his second research, he he also said that uh, it was not proved. Uh, so, but uh, it, in in business world, the, those stages are popularized and, and because and, and they are nice. Uh, people like to tr believe to them. Uh, if we talk about this, uh, yes, I know that people need time to establish connection between themselves. And if you are doing doing this uh, restructuring, then basically you are ruining a lot of those con connections. And people need to start from beginning to building those connections. Uh, so in this way, yes, they will still enter that uh, uh, norming and stor uh, storming uh, and for forming and storming uh, phase uh, stage, uh, but we let them as you remember second rule was that they choose with whom they will work so we let them ab ability that they still keep some of those connections so if you are perfectly pairing with with one of your colleagues then you're most likely will be together in, in in new team and then it will be not like completely reset and not completely starting of, of, of the building a new team it will be like starting from somewhere in the middle uh, and what is the time recommended so this depends from your organization if you ask me, ideally, you should never change your team. And, and uh, as long you work with people, uh, there is a more chance that you will know each other better and that you will have strong connections. But this is pretty affected by our businesses. So uh, Center as an organization, just to give an example, uh, in January last year, we have 30 people in IT. Now we have 200 in just one year. Uh, so our graph of scaling was more than uh, faster than a uh, Corona graph at some point. Uh, and, uh, uh, in, in, in such fast hyper growth phase, uh, we kind of expected that those changes need to happen. And still, we, 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 uh, by this implementing this tool, we actually tell to people this will happen in the past, you should expect it, but you will be the owners of your destiny. You will be prepared for that and you will make those decisions. So we kind of trying to, to play this change management role uh, as honest as possible and, and uh, not to stress our people. Uh, thank you. And uh, there is a related question. Um, do you have coaches to help with team issues? So you mentioned that you have uh, HL coaches. Maybe you could recap on uh, whether there is a coach working with each team and how this is organized. Yes, so so this is partially my role. Uh, so when we have two teams, uh, <laughs> I was doing that very well. Now when we have six teams, we, we are hiring uh, more coaches. Uh, so we have a coaches and also co uh, every part of the, either product or tech people, they have their uh, tech or, or product leads, which are doing kind of the mentoring and, and helping them to grow in their careers. Uh, Agile coaches are there from the team dynamics, from the col collaboration process, best practices. Uh, but uh, for example, engineering manager is there to help them with some technical mentoring and growing and, and, and coaching. And uh, senior product people are there also to mentor and grow our product people as well as coaches, as me. Thank you. And uh, there is a mission related question. Could you provide a mission example for a highly technical team? Is it still connected to business outcomes? Uh, so this is a great question. Uh, highly technical team, what, what does it mean? I, I, I would like to talk more about this. Uh, so at the end, uh, we should aim to create a teams which are mapped around our value streams. So each value stream should at the end deliver some value. If you have a team who is just technical team, that means that that team is mostly something like a platform team or something like team who is enabling other teams. And mostly that team do not produce directly value to the customer, to the user, to the company. And that team is maybe just a dependency for other teams. So if you have that setup, I would always consider maybe you should rethink about your setup. Maybe you could try to think cross-functional team so that it's not just technical, that team is actually the team which has like strong product vision to deliver something, if, if that's possible in, in your organization. Uh, but in case that you don't have options uh, and that you must create technical team and, and define the mission for technical team, uh, then uh, I would try to think like how that technical thing which the team is doing is affecting our customers. So either if uh, if you could think about impact, like is our software going to be faster or 
how performance will be quicker or uh, how many users is it going to make like scalable our product in future or, or or maybe something like that but probably we need to talk and to think about that okay uh, do we have more questions uh, not at the moment we do have a recommendation in the chat um on the um uh, on the uh, additional resource on dynamic reframing self selection by uh, Heidi Helfland. But we don't have more questions so far. Ah, okay. Uh, nice. Uh, I, I like this quote. Uh, and this is this is our reality. Like uh, uh, we know that no matter how hardly we want and uh, to keep our teams to work together and to have connection, but we know that business will change and that. Uh, changes sometimes are not avoidable and uh, we need to be prepared for that. So I see this self-selecting teams concept as something which could actually bring transparency to your pe people and, and prepare them for that they, when this moment comes that they actually make decisions and that they are not so stressful and uh, much, much more empowered, which is at the end the most important. So for the recording, um, the, the quote is, uh... We know that teams will always change, always change. People will live and share, which will create a new team all over again. So why not get good at changing the teams? Well, <laughs> that this part, why not be good at changing a team? Because uh, uh, we are ruining those connections. And uh, if, if something is uh, not avoidable, that doesn't mean that it's, it's always good. So I would always question like, okay, do we, do we need to do it now? Or, or, or maybe there is another way. So if, if I could protect my people and keep them together, I would always try to find another way. If we cannot, then of course, change is there. And if we are doing that more often, it doesn't mean that we are better at change. I think that then we, there is bigger chance that we will create uh, people which are not engaged, not motivated, that they could expect anything to happen any day. And uh, like there are examples of companies, like I will not say the names in Berlin, I'm, I'm from Berlin, uh, of very big companies which are basically just uh, how I can call it, schools for, for developers. Like people are there for on average one year, tenure of people in, in the, those companies like uh, around one year. They are just there to learn, to get some titles and then they're leaving. And those companies are always changing, always reorganizing, growing, growing. But uh, people are there just for 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 one step, sh very very short in their careers. And definitely, this is something which in Sender we don't want. We want to create organization where people will want to stay longer. Uh, are the all, all pod, are the pods cross regional now? Uh, so we have. Uh, cross regional pods, yes. Uh, and uh, just one of them is uh, all Berlin located. So this is now the reality due to remote work, Corona situation and everything. And uh, we are trying to, to, to live with it. Uh, okay, the, the last slide which I have prepared is actually, and uh, I would like to talk with you. How did you find this uh, tool and all this exercise, which I explained to you? Do, do you see some use cases where it could be useful in your organization or where you could use it? Is, is it possible, Alexander, that we unmute ourselves and have like a ch chit chat at end? Uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you for the uh, amazing uh, Miro, I mean, your Miro presentation skills are amazing. I'm uh, really, I'm really willing, willing to learn. Um, so you. if there are no more questions in the chat, then uh, we can, if there are uh, some, a couple of more questions, then please post them in the chat. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, let's, uh, um, let me stop the recording and then we can uh, switch to a uh, conversation, informal conversation. So let's give a few more moments. Maybe there is another question in the chat. Uh, so there is one question. Are all pod members employed or some hired? So I guess this is the question. Are they like contractors, uh, freelancers, or, or they are all full-time sender employees? 
So uh, we have uh, contractors and, and our employees as well, but we treat everyone equal. So we don't make any difference. Uh, our contractors who work with us work for a long time and they have the same power in, in making decisions equal like our own people. And this is, this is one also uh, thing which in, in, in pod, in one team, uh, everybody are equal. Everybody has the same power of, of being heard or, or, or of proposing some uh, experiments or how something should be done. So we don't, even if there is uh, engineering manager or if there is product manager, those people are not the one who have the more authority. We are trying to make everybody equal and that uh, we create kind of collaborative level where everybody could challenge each other uh, and, and make better ideas as a team. All right, there is another question in the chat. Maybe let's answer that, that question and uh, afterwards uh, switch to the, to the conversation. So um, did you have still to find to fill in some roles using unpopular managerial decision uh, straight away or after some time? So th this is an interesting question. It's happening right now. Uh, so even if uh, some unpopular manager decisions were planned to be made, uh, some, somehow naturally and organically now the different decisions came. For, for example, uh, one team uh, by doing OKRs, uh, it, was it was obvious that one team has like too much on their plate. So their mission was very important, uh, but it was not clear should they focus on engagement or should they focus on adoption. And uh, they as a one team could like focus on building uh, features for, for one of those strategical decisions and they could not focus on both. Uh, and uh, but, but just by having this issue, this was our learning. Okay, this team is maybe too big, and we need now to think about growing that team and, and splitting to the two smaller teams. Even if this was uh, not originally planned as a, a management decision of, of one of our leaders. Great, thank you very much, Azran. Um, and let's uh, let's stop the recording, and uh, let me. Um, let me disable the recording now and uh, let me invite everybody who likes to enable their videos and uh, microphones and ask your questions directly.